Hello, welcome again. In this video, we'll have a look at correspondence maps versus multi-dimension scale maps and how they work for perceptual mapping. There are six key differences we are going to look at. Here is the data that we're going to be using. As you can see, we have 10 brands and I've just labeled them by letters and we have nine attributes. The data is scored on a scale of 1 to 9, 1 meaning that it's not associated at all, and 9 meaning it's very strongly related between the brand and the attribute. Okay, here's the data color-coded, and I'll have a look at each of the brands so we get a sense of what we're looking at. This is just hypothetical data that I've constructed so we can make more sense of the, the maps. Uh, brand BBB here is scored 9 out of 9 for everything, which is unlikely, but um, I'm just showing it so how it fits on a map. And the letter G here scores 1 on everything, so it's the worst in the marketplace. A and, 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 and C are opposites. You can see they've got 7s here, they've got 7s here, 5 in the middle, and 3 of the opposites. So they work in reverse. D runs from 1 to 9. E runs from 9 to 1, so they are indeed opposites as well. A and E are similar, so they're high there in stages, stepping down, and E runs down. So the similar pattern, and the same with D, it's just in reverse. Um, F, H, and J have some good points, some 9s, and then generally not so strong on the rest. And I is a mid-range brand that only scores six here, so it has no particular strengths. Okay, so when we run this data, um, this is our correspondence analysis map. What I've done is D mapped right over the top of choice, so I just moved that up slightly in that direction, and B and G mapped right on top of each other. They were identical, um, so I just moved G down slightly a little bit. And here are our, our values coming off the correspondence analysis. And we, as you may know, uh, dimension 1, factor 1 picks up 47%, factor 2 picks up uh, 26%. So this particular map represents or uh, has around 74% in total uh, accuracy to the actual market. And here is our multi-dimension scaled map, and it has a correlation of 79. So... They, they both represent around 75% uh, reflection of the data. Okay, let's have a look at these perceptual maps side by side. The correspondence map down here and the multi-dimensional scale map up there. Okay, so what's similar? We can see that the various brands have generally mapped in the same area. Um, here we've got C, D and J. Which sit over here. We've got I and H that sit there, A and E sit there. So that's consistent. Most of the brands sit in their natural competitive sets. And the various attributes tend to sit together as well. So easy to use, style, and service. Um, they, those three are here, status and quality there, and these three are over here as well. So the attributes are mapping in consistent areas. Now, looking at differences, we've got I mapping very close to reliable with C, J, and D over here. And on this map, we've got reliable uh, you know, all together, but C, J, and D are much closer than I on this map. Um, this one here, we've got E closest to service. Uh, this one, we've got A closest to service. So we've got some differences in how the maps present, so I'll explain what's happening there. And probably the most significant difference, and probably the best way to understand correspondence analysis and how it's different, is that B and G are mapping identically on this correspondence analysis. Here they're mapping significantly apart, diagonally opposite. So let's have a work through it. Okay, so key difference number one, is correspondence analysis looks at relative differences between things uh, on our multi-dimensional scaling, it's looking at absolute differences. So just a reminder, we go back to B, which scored 9 out of 9 in everything. 
and G score 1 out of 9. So they are complete opposites. So they should, in theory, on a, on a map, sit completely distinctly from each other. So this map here maps the absolute differences. Here, correspondence analysis is looking for strengths and weaknesses in the brand compared to the average brand. And because the pattern is flat in both, um, obviously one's high, one's low, but the pattern or the variety in the data is exactly the same, it cannot distinguish between them. Okay, and closer to the center means it's less distinctive. So if we were had a brand that was the actual average of all of these numbers here, we had an average column and we mapped that, on correspondence analysis that would map right in the middle of, of this map. So if there's nothing distinguished about it, um, the, it really gravitates to the middle. Brands that are well away from the origin and pushed out here are considered to be quite distinctive. Okay, so it's looking for relative strengths and weaknesses. Here it's looking at the overall score. Okay, difference number two is correspondence analysis. We're reading angles from the center, and here we're reading distances. So if we look at uh, A and E, which are presented as fairly similar, this is more of a straight scale, this is a stepping scale. Um, We've got here that E pushes out further, so it's considered more distinctive. But it's in the same line. You can see the angle between A and E virtually identical. So they are considered to be quite similar brands. And we, we have a look at which ones head out in the, in the same direction. So the angles are relatively similar. Not much of a gap there, not much of a gap there. So they score quite close to easy to use style and service, which represents their data. So that, that's all looking good. And something like reliable um, is in, in a, almost a 90 degrees or even less relationship. So that's even no association or a negative association. So it sort of sits there. So that sort of makes sense. If you have a look at how this works, Okay, we're actually mapping distance. Um, here it's angle based, here it's distance. So A and E are, are close together, so they're considered to be quite similar. And they are very close to service, easy to use and style. So the closer they are, the stronger uh, they tend to be. They are also relatively close compared to these ones out here. Um, so I put these in the middle, quality, status and reliability which is a three here. So these are the three they're most cl closest to, bang, 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 the next level, and then the next level out, which they're away from. So we're mapping distance. Here we need to look at um, the angles from the, the origin. Okay, D uh, difference number three is here, we're looking at what attributes are owned. Where do we stand out? What are our strengths relative to everybody else? Uh, in this one, we're looking at, at, at shared attributes. So I'll come pop at that chart in a little bit. So I'm going to look at these three attributes, service, quality, and status. Obviously, B does particularly well in everything. F, this is where F for an F stands out. Got H for one of them, J for one of them. E, relatively strong. You know, 7 out of 9 still a good score. And so is uh, the brand A there. So if you have a look on this map, I've circled those three attributes. So you can see that F picks up quality uh, very strongly. Okay, It also maps over here and to here. So the, it's got a 45 degree, 30 degree angle. So it's relatively strongly related to status and service. So that makes sense. V, as I explained, um, even though it does well on these three, because it has no particular strengths, every hint is a strength, so there's not one strength, it has gravitated towards the middle of, of the map and it's not handled particularly well. Uh, we've got a H that is high in service. Service is here, but H is down here. So I'll, I'll come back to that a bit later because H has actually got um, some other advantages which pushes it in this direction. I'll talk about that. 
So what we're trying to identify is, gee, what really stands out? So it's saying, F, you stand out for quality. You are the go-to place for quality, even though B scores well. Um, H, you stand out for service, but you stand out for reliability relatively more. Okay, and then we've got J over here uh, for status. And again, you can see it's not that related because it's, it's also strong on, on other things. So it's trying to pick up the one or two attributes that are well above average, unique to the brand. You know, what's different about the brand relative to everybody else? Okay, if we have a look at how this map handles it, it's trying to make the most logic of this. Again, it's a distance thing. So service here, uh, it should get an A, B, E, F, and H. So it's trying to do the e, it's e, A, H, F, and B. So it's trying to map those. Quality here should get a B and F. So it does that. And then status, it needs to go to B, F and J, so B, F and J. So you can see what it's trying to do is make like a geographic map, the most logical map, uh, as best it can. Remember, it has about a 79% a correlation, so most of it's explained. Okay, um, key difference number four is, uh, which I've sort of been talking about, it's trying to look at strengths, and it'll highlight one of those. So I said we'll talk about brand H. So you can see it scores 9 on service, which we had before. It scores 9 on exciting. But you can see exciting's over here, um, sort of related, you know, maybe 60, 70% angle. Um, service, unfortunately, is over here, which is a, just over 90%, which indicates no real association on this map. And the closest attribute it has is reliability, but when you, which is another nine. So out of the three nines, it's picked up this one where it stands out. And the reason is I've done these scores, nine versus the average brand, and obviously 67%, 64% above average, but this one's 80% above the average. So this is the standout attribute. So even though it's well related to this one and this one, reliability is where it steps up, if that makes sense. In this map, again, uh, the multi-dimensional scaling one, we are trying to base it on absolute distance. So uh, obviously there's quite a few nines in the data and which pulls every brand to bits and pieces. But you can see brand H, reliability, exciting, service, and the other ones are put further away. Okay, let's bring in Brand I now. And I, Brand I was the one that had two sixes and everything else was pretty pretty poor. And as you can see, it does better than H, which is the data there. It looks to be close, even closer on reliability, closer on excitement, closer on choice. So the two sixes are in exciting and choice. And reliability only gets scores of three compared to a nine. So again, because I is a genuinely underrepresented brand, it has weak schools all the way through, and then suddenly it stands out here, it's saying, hey, you know, given your overall score as a brand, these two things stand out pretty well. So you can see those angles there are relatively close. Okay, difference number five is correspondence analysis maps on two, two dimensions. You know, as you can see, there are numbers sitting across there and down there. Here, there are no numbers. Um, this is some of the output from correspondence analysis, uh, which I talked about before, and we take the two biggest uh, percentages. So this one across represents 47% of the, of the map, and that's another 26%, so 74% in total. And the map explains that. And we're just using the top two factors. So all those numbers come out of your, your uh, statistical package. So we know what those dimensions are and how it's looking at and exactly. Here, there's no lines. There's no dimensions. I've got grid marks on there, but um, that's for formatting. That's not part of the map. 
So basically, it's then up to the analysts or the market researcher or the marketer to play with their perceptual map based on their understanding of the market, based on their understanding of the data and, and uh, the competitors, and to work out what these dimensions are. They would actually label them and put the extremes on them, what that means to that means. And that's designed for the, the analyst to sit down and think about the market from the point of view of the consumer. Remember, this is all consumer data here. So we're trying to think of how the consumer thinks. And we may have two dimensions. We may have three, possibly even four different dimensions. So we can actually get a lot more insight out of the marketplace. OK, and key difference number six is that uh, correspondence analysis on the same data will we'll re reproduce over and over and over the same way. Uh, Multi-dimensional scaling, um, because it's trying to fit it in a, on a logical map, it, it will run slightly different. So this is the version I've been using, and then I rerun it again, and you can see I get a slight difference in correlation, and I get a slightly different map. Brand G was here, and now it's at the top. This is the one that scores one on everything. So it's unrelated to every single attribute. So it's pushed, in both cases, up to the side. Um, and you can see there are slight other changes. C, J, and D were there quite close. And it's D's moved out a little bit. Modern choice exciting. Modern choice exciting is still there. So this type of analysis you can run it a couple of times have a look at a few different maps and from your own viewpoint which ones make more sense uh, and what insights can we gain from it so this is a bit more of an analytical tool and whereas the uh, correspondence analysis gives you a lot more statistics output as well so that's the the key differences uh, you can get more information at that website perceptualmaps.com